Salutations readers, welcome to, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nketi and for today this is going to be my Optumnal TBR 2024. So I will link down below my previous seasonal TBRs if y'all have not season, seen them already. But I am looking forward though to a new season coming on. I am so looking forward to autumn. Autumn is literally my favorite season y'all, especially here in Minnesota. The problem though is, is that um... Autumn doesn't last long, unfortunately. For some reason, I, I don't know why it's so short. Because really, by weather-wise, it feels like we just have summer that really wants to linger. And then, of course, winter likes to start early and last even longer. But our summers, though, it lingers. So we don't have really a long autumn, unfortunately. Like, by the time autumn really starts, it feels like we have just, like, a cool summer before it's really like, okay, this is actually, like, fall you know and then it's like oh this is kind of feeling like a warm winter so it's just like you only get like six weeks of autumn if we're lucky which really sucks because those six weeks oh perfect weather you can have sunny clear skies and you won't feel like you're burning to a crisp and you can have a nice cool breeze that actually feels cool instead of blowing humid air or something. Regardless though, I am looking forward though to the new season. Now the order of operations here, I am gonna switch it around because I have a lot more obligation reads versus like my priority and content reads. So we're gonna start with like priority stuff. Some possible priority reads that like, you know what, I really wanna read it during this time. We shall see if I end up actually reading it. Cause again, seasonal TBRs, as a mood, mood reader, things can change. So nothing here is set in stone, except for most of the obligation reads. So as far as my first priority read, I do have actually two books and both of those books are actually self-published. And one of those books is Fallen Thorns by Harvey o Oliver Baxter. This is the first book and I think it's a, I don't know if it's like a duology. I don't know. This is definitely the first book in the series. It even has my number one on the spine. But this book is, I know for sure it's queer. I think there's definitely vampires in here. I think it's also Dark Academia. But it also features an Arrow Ace main character, which also was pretty much uh, the buzzword for me to even purchase a copy of this self-published book. That's it though. That's all I really know of it. I heard some pretty good things for a few people who have already read it, trust the reviews, and now I want to read it. Now the second and final priority read that I hope to read during the fall, if not, we'll see if I can push it to winter. But really though, I really want to read in the fall though, is Modern Divination by Isab Agajaninian. I think that's how you pronounce their name. This is a first book in a duology. I think it's a spells for life and death duology. Now this is self-published, but the book is actually gonna be republished traditionally next year. It comes out in the UK in January, but I'm not so sure for the US release, but it does seem like it is gonna be released in the United States. I just don't know when that is, but at least in the United in the UK, it's at least in January. And all I know is that this feature, this is a contemporary fantasy romance. I think it's like supposed to be inspired, or at least it's definitely been compared to House Moving Castle, which did intrigue me. And I've had this book since the book came out last January. Now, not like this past January, but like January before then, like 2023 January. So it's very interesting to see like how the, like two years after the self-published release date, it's going to be traditionally published. But yeah, I also really just want to read it before the traditional publish comes out just to see any stark differences because according to the author, there will be differences from like the self-published to the traditional published version. And since this is a first book on duology, it, the second book did not come out so I do need to actually probably, I most likely will have to read the tradi the traditionally published version anyways in order to continue all the series. But I do want to just at least try to read the self-published version first. And also it's also queer as well. It features two bisexual main characters. Now that is it as far as priority reads. Now let's talk about the two books I want to read for content during this season. Ideally, I really want to read Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia during this fall because it's pretty much a perfect book for this season. I mean, Mexican Gothic. All I know is that we're following Noemi. She's living in like this house manner thing. Something about dreams, something about being, yeah, she's a debutante. She's pretty much in like a rich family. I don't know. Generally, I don't really know what the actual plot of the story is. All I know is that I've seen a lot of people praise this book. I've seen people not fully love it either, but I have seen so many people being just a fan of Silvio Moreno Garcia. And I've had this book for a little while now. And I've been meaning to just read it because it's a gothic novel. It's a gothic horror. Like, I love gothic horror. It's the perfect time to read gothic horror is in the fall. So I think it's just obvious to me that I should just read it for the fall. And then the second, but also final book I really want to read for content 
content is rereading The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. I did start rereading this book in like January, but then I had to put my this book down because I was overwhelmed with other books. And then I haven't picked up this book again for a reread. So I'm hoping for this fall that I could read it. I could reread it. All right, now this last section here is gonna be a large section because these are all obligation reads. And by obligation reads, I mean arcs. Yo, I have a lot of arcs that I gotta read. I really am behind on my arc reading, which now show now is just accumulating now for my autumn obligation reads to pretty much be reading. Okay, let's read all the arcs that I got that are for the books that are coming out in September and October. And I have a lot for some reason. I don't know why, but I just end up getting approval of a lot of arcs, which I'm grateful for. But now I'm just like, damn, I need to actually like read these things so let's just start getting into it let's start with the, ar uh, the arcs that are coming out in september which a lot of these arcs are kindle reads but also i am getting advanced listening copies from mcmillian audio since i am a 2024 mcmillian audio influencer so i am going to be getting some more advanced listening copies as well throughout autumn as well so this list is not even conclusive just full on disclosure but let's get right into it i only think i have four arcs for september one of them is compound fracture by andrew joseph white this comes out September 3rd. I do have an e arc of this one, and I do really want to <laughs> read this book. It's my third Andrew Joseph White novel, and I really am looking forward to finishing this book because I did start it. I'm not done with it, but I did start with the book, and I, so far is pretty good, y'all. So looking forward to finishing that. Next up is Immortal Dark by, I think, I can't remember. Is it Tejas Germa? I think that's the author's name. And that also comes out September 3rd. This is the first book in a YA fantasy trilogy. And I recently got it from Hachette Audio. So yeah, this one's an audiobook one. And I'm really looking forward though to reading this one. Because I've been seeing some pretty good buzz about this book. I think this will be really, really cool. Next up, Devils Kills Devils by I think Johnny Capt Compton. This is the same author as The Spite House. And this one comes out September 24th. I'm just interested in this one because, I don't know, there's just something about Tor and Nightfire with their works that just always intrigues me. And this one in particular, I really am just curious to read something from Johnny Compton. I've never read The Spite House, but I do think Devil's Kills Devils might be the kind of horror meant for me. Another book coming out on September 24th is The Naming Song. I don't recall the author name, but I did get this from McMillian Audio. So I am indeed also looking forward to this one. This one I, I requested from McMillian Audio because it had some uh, comparisons regarding Kimiro Del Toro and Hayao Miyazaki. And I'm just like, if you're gonna have those two powerhousing filmmakers, as like a comparison to your novel, you better deliver. So now I'm just gonna be the judge. Now, am I a biggest fan of Guillermo del Toro? Tell me speaking, no. I've only really been watching like his, the Pinocchio film he made. And Hayao Miyazaki, I'm always gonna be a ride or die Hayao Miyazaki fan, okay? So anything that compares to that, I must read. I, I, I gotta read, I gotta know for myself. And then next up, arcs for October, which I have, I think six arcs. For, that are coming out in October. One of them is Model Home by River Solomon and it comes out October 1st. This one is a thriller. I think it's a horror and thriller. And it takes place in like a, in the suburbs. I don't remember where, which suburb being state, I don't know. All I know is that this is another thriller and it's written by River Solomon, who is a favorite author of mine. I've read all of their work so far. So this is their fourth novel and I'm looking forward to reading it. Another book coming out October 1st, The City in Glass by Nivo. This one is a standalone novella fantasy. It does not take place in the Sigan Hill cycle at all. Not even like the other previous novels either by her. I really am thankful though that Tor.com approved me of this arc because I really am a fan of Nevo, at least with her novel, her novella writing. So I'm totally here for The City in Glass and I really love the cover as well. So yes, I do hope to at least read that sooner than later. And then I have one book that's coming out in October 8th, Blood of the Old Kings by I think Sung Il Kim, which is translated by Anton Her. This one is a fantasy novel. And I think it's meant to be somewhere, I think it's supposed to be like a nod towards classic fantasy, which I'm not a avid reader of. I don't really read classic fantasy, but I am here though to read books that are being translated, especially in the fantasy realm. So next up, the next two books here I have e arcs for comes out October 15th and they're both from Bindery actually. They're both from different um, binary imprints. So very cool actually to read the two out of the four Bindery books that'll be coming out in October. 
So one of the strange beasts. I do re recall this being queer, historical, fantasy, and I think a romance as well. It's supposed to be something like a mixture between Dracula and Sherlock Holmes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and it's sapphic. So yes, I haven't seen the greatest of reviews for this book, but I am curious though to see what I will think about this. And in this other book called Inferno's Air, I'm already, I don't really remember what the genre text for this one is either. I think this was a fantasy. I, I'm pretty sure this is fantasy. I don't remember much else about it, but I don't know. It's just one of the remaining binary books that I was like, you know what? Let's just request to see if they say yes. And they said yes. So I'm just like, well, here I am with the arc of it. I don't know. No, I'm just very curious about Inferno's Air. I just don't remember what it was about, unfortunately. And then last, but certainly not least, this ER coming out October 29th, Blood Over Brighthaven by Emma Wong. This is the republic, the, this is gonna be a traditionally published version of this book. I did not read the self-published version at all, but I am grateful though from Del Rey that they get, that they approved of me of getting this ERC. So yeah, comes out late October, pretty much very close to Halloween. And I'm very, very excited to read this one because I still haven't read The Sword of Kaigen. Not yet. Blood of a Bright Haven. I, I'm very much certain I will be reading that one first. But I definitely know this is a fantasy, dark academia kind of novel. And I think I've seen people who've read this one and Babel that they prefer Blood Over Bright Haven over Bra Babel. And if you do not know me, Babel was my favorite book of 2022. So if it's better than Babel, we're all set. We're, we're set to go. You hear me? Anyways, these are the books. Well, physically, and then of course my Kindle and, you know, headphones, whatever, for arcs and advanced listening copies and stuff. But these are pretty much all the books that I plan to read for this autumn. Now, let's see if I include the art in these four books. That is pretty much 14 books that I plan to read this fall. So that's a lot, honestly. If you've seen my previous TBR videos and you've seen my wrap ups, then you'll kind of already know that my odds as far as actually following through with this TBR is not the greatest. It really is not, even with obligation reads. However, comma, I'm gonna believe in myself and thinking that at least for obligation reads, I'll get through all of them. That's my hope. And as far as these books right here, the hope is half of these, just two of these, okay? But anyways, though, that's pretty much it. That's all I really have for y'all as far as this TBR. If you've liked this video, please like it. Comment, below, comment down below any of y'all's thoughts on these books, especially regarding like Mexican Gothic or any of the self-published books or even the Starless Sea, if any of y'all read that or if any of y'all are really looking forward to any of the obligation reads I'll be reading. And if you're new here, subscribe, you know, hit the subscribe button if you want to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell button as well to be notified whenever I upload next, especially for reading sprints. Now, if you made it this far into the video and you're not really sure what to say, but you want to let me know you're here, why don't you just leave me any leaf emoji, preferably a fall one. Any leaf emoji will do. Anyways, thank you all for coming on to this video and I hope to see you on my next one. Bye.